I'm very, very honored to be here to pay my tribute to, to Ennio de Giorgi. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm grateful for this uh, uh, to the organizing committee, of course, uh, who gave me the opportunity to be enlisted with so many great mathematicians. And, uh, uh, and I also am happy to see you a young generation of brilliant mathematicians to be here and follow the footsteps uh, of Ennio de Giorgi. And, uh, and it's also grateful to the previous uh, speakers uh, for the beautiful talks, of course, and for having uh, given us a glimpse of their memories of Ennio de Giorgi and uh, triggering also my memories. And, uh, maybe I, I will share a few with you because I Actually, as uh, uh, for your own cell, it's an anniversary also for me. It's 35 years ago that I arrived from Pisa. It was my, my third year at the university, actually, because I spent two years in Padova. And so when I arrived here, I was confronted. Uh, I entered Scuola Normale, and there you had a, a colloquium at the third year. So I had uh, the problem of finding an advisor and I did not, know, did not know anybody. So I asked the, the person that I knew, uh, because he had uh, examined me, uh, who, was, uh, who was Franco Conti. And, uh, and uh, he said, OK, the, 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 the op since he knew that I was, uh, was keen on, on, uh, on uh, analysis, he advised me to, to, to try to, to ask the Georgie, but the Georgie had not taken uh, uh, students in analysis for a while, so I was very worried. And I remember uh, that uh, afternoon waiting for him. I did not know who he was, actually. And so I was uh, scared. I was very shy at the time, still am. And, uh, uh, but then this guy came with a smile and said, hello and uh, said he, there was no problem. He would give me the his colloquium uh, uh, subject, was the, the, the paper with, uh, with Letta. And then we, we, the, the, the year after we moved to the thesis, he gave me uh, a conjecture. As, uh, as Giuseppe Buttazzo said, it was, you know, maybe you can look at this. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's reasonable that uh, you can homogenize this uh, energy without, uh, without coerciveness, you can look at this. And then we, I went on with the thesis. And uh, also, uh, the, another thing that uh, Furio Onsel was mentioning yesterday uh, struck me when, when I completed my thesis. And uh, the Georgi wrote a kind of, uh, uh, of preface to my thesis, not an introduction, a preface. And I was stunned by, by his style. And, uh, I really understood what was inside my thesis after, after reading his, his preface. And uh, so I entered, uh, actually these two years I had all these exams to attend, so I did not enter the, 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 the proper family of, uh, of the Georgi. Uh, only, I, had, I entered only when I, when I was a perfezionando, a PhD student. And at the time, as uh, Pierre Lyons recalled, uh, the, the people were gathering, uh, mainly at, uh, at the Timpano building, and uh, sometimes he was proposing some, uh, some uh, theories. But at the time, uh, we had a, a lot of discussion about gamma convergence. Uh, many were proposing him uh, uh, some, some, some problems that they have taken with, uh, on other papers, and, and, uh, and he would start uh, you know, developing conjectures and, uh, and, uh, and I was a PhD student and, 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 and all these uh, conjectures and methods uh, uh, were, were beyond my comprehension mostly. And, uh, and, 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 and I was a bit uh, worried about that, but then I realized that also the other people in the room were, uh, were stunned by the intuition of the Georgie. And, uh, and so, uh, in these last uh, 20 years, and also before, uh, I, I, I keep recalling some conjectures, some uh, theorems, uh, some, uh, and saying, oh, that's, 
That's why the Georgi wanted this theorem to be stated in this way. Oh, that's why he preferred this method rather than the other one. And, and, and that was a, a seed planted in these discussions there. And uh, OK, so that's also my, the starting point of, uh, of my talk. And uh, so I said there were uh, positive conjectures that he would, uh, he was very generous in, in giving conjectures. We could, uh, uh, it's a pity that at the time nobody was collecting them. Uh, and uh, he was explaining his, his uh, working methods. Very little proofs, actually, as uh, Pierre-Louis Lyons uh, explained, but said, OK, you can find this and that in, other, in this paper, and then you can look up. And, but sometimes, uh, actually a couple of times, uh, in my interaction with the Georgia, I had some negative statements. So uh, my talk would be about one of these negative statements that uh, came to my mind uh, recently. Uh, so, but before that, as I as written on my slide, I have to recall to explain this, the statement, some of the interests of the George in the last years. One also was uh, recalled was uh, uh, the concept of minimizing movement, which I think uh, uh, the Georgi uh, picked up uh, in the last years from a paper by Amgren, Taylor, and Wong about uh, uh, about motion by mean curvature. So I, uh, it was already recalled in the talk uh, uh, by Giuseppe Savare. And uh, the idea is to give a notion of gradient flow for very, very mild, very, under very mild assumptions on the energies and on the spaces. So uh, you have uh, uh, an energy, which is called F here, and what we call a dissipation, which is uh, uh, the typical we give a typical uh, uh, energy that you dissipate at a time scale. So you need to have also a time scale here, which is called tau. So uh, given uh, these ingredients, you define, starting from initial data, a discrete orbit, which is, to define this, you just need to, to, to have a, a minimum of these problems there. So you some lower semi-continuity and compactness. And uh, uh, then you pass to the continuum, just uh, taking, for example, the piecewise, uh, uh, piecewise uh, constant interpolations at scale tau. At scale tau. And then you, you pass to the limit. This is a minimizing movement. Of course, the, 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 the hard part is then to characterize the limit. And in the case of Armgren, Taylor, and Wong, these uh, uh, unknowns were uh, sets, so x is a set, f. Uh, is the perimeter and the dissipation is a, a, an L2 distance of the boundaries. Okay, I'm not going to write down exactly the dissipation, even though it will, it will come up uh, in, in the sequel. And this is a way, in general, to define a notion of curves of maximal slope, uh, or proving the existence of curves of maximal slope, and, and it's a way also to, to, to have a, a, a definition of gradient flow in Hilbert space. So you have to look up. You want, if you want, you can look up at the book by Ambrosio Gili Savare to know everything about it. So, uh, so we can, I can talk about the negative statement of the Georgi. So it was 1995, the conference on calculus of variation on linear elasticity in Cortona. So we were having uh, lunch, after lunch actually, and we stayed uh, alone and on, 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 a, on a side. And uh, at the time I was interested in nonlinear various types of nonlinear homogenization. And so I asked the Georgi if it would poss be possible to use this minimizing movement scheme for the homogenization of these nonlinear functionals of many energy wells. And he looked at me just for, it's like in the tale of, uh, of Piero d'Ancona yesterday. So he said, uh, not so duro after a while. So it's hard not to crack or it's, it's a difficult issue. So, uh, it, uh, so I, I was, uh, of course, uh, uh, very puzzled because I was expecting maybe a conjecture or maybe mild conjecture with many question marks there or, and, okay, but uh, there was n no time for an ex explanation and then unfortunately we, 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 we had no time to talk about that uh, anymore. So I'll give you a, a little, very, very, uh, you will excuse me for the, uh, for the very triviality of this example to show that uh, why you can't immediately 
talk about a, a limit uh, problem when you have oscillating energies. So uh, uh, this is, in a sense, a prototypical example. So you have a minimizing energy, which is a, a, a sine oscillate, and then you have an, a scale, epsilon. Let's think of epsilon being fixed, uh, but small, and then you let everything go to zero. And then you have this simple dissipation. So you are on the real line, so we are looking at motion of points. And uh, to make it non-trivial, you also add a slope. You have minus x plus an oscillating energy. So you apply the minimizing scheme. And uh, if uh, uh, the dissipation the coefficient is very large, the tau is very small, then you converge to the closest local minimum, which is epsilon close to, well, we, we start from 0, but any point would, would, do, would be the same. You, start, you go to the nearest local minimum. If instead the, the dissipation has a little uh, role, then uh, the, the oscillations uh, uh, are not there. So you can, you can neglect the oscillations. It's, it's like uh, minimizing a parabola. Because you add a parabola to, to a linear function, essentially. So you, 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 every time you minimize the same energy, just translating the parabola. And so the, 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 the motion is, is constant. In the limit, you have x prime equals 1, as one expects. But in the middle, if tau is over the order, order of epsilon, then minimization is not so, so, so clear. You start from 0, then you can end up in one, in, one, uh, in one well. They may be on the second well, but then you don't have enough energy to move from that well. You stay in that well. Then you move in the, the other well. So you have an increasing orbit, so increasing meaning, meaning, meaning going to, uh, to the right. But the motion is driven by some kind of dynamical system. And uh, you make some computation, and you see that there is a, an average velocity. Actually, it's not clear whether it depends on the, uh, the, the average velocity, uh, but it depends uh, on the ratio tau over epsilon. So the limit is something homogenized. So we, uh, this is a very simple example, which shows, well, first of all, you can't talk about a, a, a limit. The limit. There are many limits, and the limits depend, uh, in this case, by the ratio, uh, which we call the gamma, yeah, the asymptotic ratio of tau over epsilon. And uh, you have uh, some cases in which you, you are trapped into the local minima, and some cases in which you have to compute a homogenized velocity. You, prove that you have to prove that there is homogenization, so you, you the, the velocity does not depend on, on the initial, on initial data. Okay. So, but that's already, this can be formalized by the, the minimizing movement scheme, actually. It's just you, you introduce some, some epsilon there. So you define a minimizing movement along f epsilon at scale tau. Simply you say, okay, we fix tau and epsilon, as in the example. You, minima, you, you, you construct a discrete orbit. You extend it time continuously uh, with time step tau. And then you let simultaneously epsilon and tau go to zero. Then you obtain a limit, and the limit depends on epsilon and tau. So definition of uh, a family of minimizing movement is, uh, is the same as before, but now you have to specify uh, the scale. So it's strange that it, we are halfway through the week, and uh, I'm the first one to mention gamma convergence uh, explicitly. And uh, gamma convergence, indeed, is uh, uh, is the uh, the great contribution, I would say, uh, of uh, any other Georgia to some kind of uh, applied mathematics, because it provided a terminology which was really needed. Uh, it was at the right time, the, the right uh, notion because there are a lot of problems in which you have uh, an increasing number of particles, uh, small scales, and you want to describe the limit, and the limit maybe is completely different. So in the, in the, in the, in the case of uh, gamma convergence, it's enough to have a notion of convergence which can be very, very, very weak. Very, you can have, uh, as in the first example of Modica Mortola, you can have H1 function converging to uh, BV functions to sets of finite perimeter, and the definition, it can be phrased in this way. You, uh, you want a, a sequence family gamma converges if uh, whenever you take uh, continuous perturbations, well, 
or rather uh, perturbation that, con that converge continuously, you have convergence of, of the minimum problems. And that's, uh, in a sense, that's exactly what you want. So the, it's given in, in terms of, uh, of your desired property. Actually, there are many other definitions which are more, uh, more uh, uh, useful, uh, I mean, in, in, the, in the computation. So we, if you apply this uh, uh, to the uh, minimizing movement scheme, then uh, you, if uh, the dissipations, if you have a sequence of dissipations, or if the dissipation itself is continuously convergence to the limit dissipation, when you have convergence of the previous steps, uh, then you, you have the minimizers uh, at fixed epsilon converge the minimizer of the limit at uh, fixed time scale. This is a, a trivial uh, application of the definition that you, you've seen above of gamma convergence. So you have that indeed one of the possible limits that you obtain is always uh, uh, the, 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 the minimizing movement of the gamma limit. That's a simple, uh, a simple uh, diagonal argument. So if, since at fixed tau you have this convergence, then you take a diagonal sequence, and then you have this, uh, uh, this convergence. If the f epsilon plus the dissipations are equicoercive, of course. So this, why this is important? Because you always have a comparison. So if you can compute the, uh, the, the minimizing movement of the gamma limit, which is usually simpler, then you have a comparison energy, comparison movement. I would like to make a little detour uh, about the questions that, that, that uh, has, uh, uh, has taken some uh, uh, interest in, in, the last, uh, uh, in the last years, about the, the conditions that guarantee compatibility of gamma convergence and minimizing movement at all scales. So it would be nice to have conditions that, so that uh, whenever you are dealing with, with a problem, with, a, with, a, uh, with an evolutionary problem uh, with, uh, with an, a little parameter going to zero, then you can directly pass to the limit. And the classical answer is the convex energies. But the convex energies, uh, you have classical results by Brazis, and also there is a proof uh, of Ambrosio and Gilles exactly adapted to the minimizing movement, even though they, they are looking at gradient flows. And this is connected with, but uh, the, the, the problem is connected with recent work on nonlinear, nonlinear energies, like uh, uh, gradient flows for Ginsburg, Landau, Manforshaw, and so on. Here's a list of, of mo mostly double names, Ginsburg, Landau, Manforshaw, Leonard Jones, Perona, Malik. They all have been uh, dealt with by these uh, people, especially uh, one uh, uh, seminal paper is, is the one by Sandy Serfati. So we had a, a contribution uh, with uh, Maria Colombo, Massimo Gobbino, Margherita Solci, a little contribution to this discussion, which I, I like to, uh, to include uh, in, in this form, which is a little less general than the, than the original one. So if you have, uh, uh, showing that if you have uh, some bounds, not only uh, so you have this condition here that says that if you have, sorry, uh, if you have uh, a sequence, convergent, uh, convergent sequence with bounds on the energies and uh, on, the, on the slopes, uh, defined as uh, um, in the definition by the Georgi, then the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sequence is a recovery sequence for the gamma limit, and sorry, there is an epsilon here, and you have a, a gamma limit inequality along along the uh, along along the slopes. Okay. Then you, in order to come back to minimize the movement, you have to make an assumption on the limit energy that uh, the curves of maximal slopes are exactly minimizing movements. So we know that the converse is true that minimizing movement gives curves of maximal slope. So this is an assumption on, on the limit energy, but otherwise. Uh, the, pro, the, 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 the theorem is true, but we prove that the limit is a curve of maximal slope. So if this happens, and this can be checked on, 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 uh, on some energies, then, and it's true, for example, if the energies uh, are, uh, are convex, and you have also uh, more uh, general uh, assumptions given by Colombo and Gobino that, that prove that it holds in larger class, 
then uh, any minimizing movement is exactly the minimizing movement of the limit. So you have a, a general condition, a, a compatibility or, or compatibility uh, condition in this case. And uh, I, I, want, I wanted to include this result, especially because the proof is really the Georgian proof. So you can feel the, not only the, the, so the, the concepts and, and the, the dilemmas that the Georgi knew would be helpful to, to prove such a proof. So maybe he, he, he would give you the, the statement and then the, the, the proof you, you could find by yourself because you already had the lemma. And the, the, so in this case, what you do, you, you, you don't take, you, you're supposed to have a minimizing movement. Then it's a limit of, uh, of some x uh, tau epsilon as constructed uh, before, but then the Georgi knew better that it's, it's better to have another type of interpolants, and he constructed them in a way that you can compare uh, the difference of the energies with, uh, uh, with uh, the integral of the derivative. These are piecewise affine interpolants uh, and, uh, some, uh, uh, and, uh, and the slopes there. And now you, you just pass to the limit, in the limit inequality, another gamma convergence uh, concept, if you want. Then passing into the limit is very easy because you have strong, strong convergence of the x tau epsilon, and then you have instead a lo lower semi-continuity uh, convergence of the slopes. And then you are proving that the, the, the limit is a curve of maximal slope, and then it's, it's a minimizing movement. So this is. If you want an adaptation of, the, uh, of a proof by some DSRFAT to the case of minimizing movement, or an extension of the proof um, of, of Ambrosio, uh, Giglio, Savare to the case of varying energies, but it, it's, it's already in the ideas of the George. Okay, let's go back uh, to, uh, to our question and, and to another late interest of the Georgi, which was. Uh, the uh, passage from discrete to continuum, actually, the, the, the finite different energies. Uh, uh, finite different energies uh, were already studied in, in the 80s uh, uh, by gamma convergence. And maybe the idea is, was there to, in, to insert some mesh dependence on, on your energies depending on some parameter. And, uh, uh, and uh, the question was mainly, how, how fine must be the mesh so that you have still gamma converges to the same limit. But Chambol, had a, Chambol at the time uh, was a young student, a former student of Pierre-Louis Lyons coming uh, to Italy, he was a postdoc at CISA. And uh, he had this, uh, uh, this uh, result. It's a very simple result, but very, very, very nice. It's a seminal result in which uh, he, he de dealt with uh, highly non-convex energies, with, which were simply truncated quadratic potentials, in which the mesh and the truncation were acting at the same time, and in the limit you, would, you obtained uh, the manfort shah energy. And, and uh, the Georgi was fasc fascinated uh, uh, by, by this fact, and indeed uh, he, uh, he interviewed uh, uh, very uh, at length, uh, Chambol, trying to understand uh, where the, all these came from, and he was in also uh, uh, interested in the applications uh, to compu computer vision of, of this. And, uh, and it brought also to one of the last conjecture, then proved uh, by Massimo Gobbino. And, uh, and at the same time, uh, Gianni Dalmaso and I were, uh, were following the, this path uh, shown by us by by the Georgi of, of uh, having introducing non-local energies uh, such as the one uh, with, uh, with finite differences because you have uh, points uh, uh, at finite difference uh, inter interacting. So it's kind of long range uh, non-local energy. And it, this, this brought a little by bit, little to have, to have uh, a, 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 a discrete to continuum theory by gamma convergence uh, by, by itself. As, uh, as, uh, as a subject. And uh, we start with Maria Stella Gelli here in the audience and continued with, with a number of paper. And it was a very timely subject, actually, because a lot of people, uh, as, as it happens uh, in, in mathematics, were thinking about the same, the same kind of problems at the same time. 
uh, and uh, uh, such as Pierre Louis Lyons, uh, Claude Leblis, uh, Vignan Eu, uh, Frise, Ketail, uh, Ortiz. Uh, a lot of papers appear at the same time. And I said, there is too much to, uh, to, uh, to look for in these discrete uh, energies. And we really missed the George in these last 20 years because he would have directed uh, this, uh, would have helped us to choose, to choose some of these problems uh, there. In, uh, uh, that we have to, to choose from. So I'm talking now about a, 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 I'm, I'm slowly, uh, slowly coming to, to the subject of, of, of my talk, uh, introducing some, the very simplest lattice uh, uh, spin energies, lattice energy. So we, we, are, we are in, uh, uh, in Z2, actually in a scaled copy of Z2, we introduce a small, a small parameter epsilon, and we have uh, uh, what, uh, what uh, is called the ferromagnetic nearest neighbor system, which is usually written in, in, a, in, in, a, in a different way, but it's, um, it's the same up to, to a constant, uh, written in this way. And uh, where you, you have a, a variable, u, UI that takes a, a, value, a simple value, 0 and 1, uh, on the nodes of the lattice. And, uh, uh, and the energy is, is the, that one called F epsilon. And it's strange enough, uh, it was not the first, it's, it's so simple, it should have been the first energy to, to be looked at, but uh, uh, we were not even the first the, to, to look at this and at the variational standpoint. Actually, the first two were Caffarelli and De La Llave. Uh, which may, made us very proud to have thought about that afterwards. And uh, we don't talk about gamma convergence. They look at plane-like minimizers, uh, but, uh, uh, but the gamma convergence is immediately deduced so the, by the, uh, their characterization of plane-like minimizers. So they look at, at, at a more general setting, but the, the gamma limit for these energies uh, is, is immediate. So, how do we think of the gamma limit? Well, we, we identify spin functions, which are pictured in, in, this, uh, in this representation of the lattice as black and white points. Think that the black points are one and the white points are zeros, where the function is one or zero. So where the function is one, you can identify uh, with a set. So you, you, you take the piecewise, uh, uh, piecewise uh, constant interpolation. So this is a set taking value 0, 1. And it's a set of finite perimeter because this energy here is just the measure of the boundary of the set. So every time we, uh, so we have interaction only on nearest neighbors, so we, we are just uh, uh, accounting for the length of this interface. Okay. Uh, so, you can define a limit, a discrete to continuum limit of, uh, of functions u epsilon converging to sets because you have a bound on, on these sets. And these sets, uh, so the, 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 the limit is a set, if you want. And uh, on this set, you, you can compute the gamma limit. And in this case, because of the anisotropy of the, of the lattice, it's just a, 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 what is called the crystalline perimeter, in which the, the minimal sets given, given an area are squares, and it can be written in this way as an integral on the boundary of the set, depending on the normal. And you can uh, have a lot of, of, of other energies converging to, to crystalline energies, actually. And uh, uh, so why looking at the minimizing movement for, for, for this kind of, of, of systems? Right? Actually, uh, the idea ca uh, came from, from a talk uh, by John Kahn, at the Siam uh, meeting in Los Angeles, and he was showing us beautiful, uh, beautiful numerical experiments on, uh, uh, on the motion of interfaces of binary alloys. And in there, he, he, there was some, some, some kind of flickering that uh, he was not sure that it was a, a something coming from, from the material or something due to numerical approximation. So that was something interesting in, in this movement and, uh, and uh, so it, uh, it's, uh, 
so it, it stayed there for some time, and, and, and at some point we, we decided to, to look at this problem in this very simple case of, uh, of spin systems. Actually, we have two general facts for these uh, spin systems. One is uh, that uh, if the dissipation, if the dissipation uh, coefficient, if the time scale tau is very small with respect to epsilon, that everything is spinned. Everything stays there. Why? This is a, simply, a simple uh, dimensional uh, analysis. So uh, you, can't, you have to move by a minimal quantity, but this minimal quantity is very large with respect to the time that you, that you have uh, to, to move. So in the, time is a, the, the, the optimal time is exactly epsilon. Conversely, well, we know that we have some compatibility with the, with the, with the, with the flow of the limit uh, at some scale, but the scale is exactly uh, tau equals to epsilon. So uh, tau equals uh, of the same order of epsilon is a critical scaling above which you have, uh, you have the, 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 the limit of uh, the, the flow of the limit. And the flow of the limit is what is called the flat flow. So the flow of, uh, of uh, uh, a crystalline perimeter, which was studied by Jean Taylor first, and then Altgren and Taylor proved that the, this uh, uh, minimizing movement, actually, this movement scheme, actually is motion by crystalline curvature. It's a rather complex uh, uh, thing to justify, but the, the, the good thing is that you can understand what is crystalline by, by motion by crystalline curvature just looking at the evolution of simple sets. This is in 2D, in a larger dimension, uh, most is unknown. And uh, uh, it, it, it's enough to, to look at uh, the evolution of wolf-like sh shapes, so uh, shapes which take the, the direction of the wolf shape, which in this case are rectangles. And you can compute the velocity of rectangles. Rectangles shrink in finite time with a velocity which is inversely proportional to their length. So it's uh, actually two over the length. So this can be generalized to uh, arbitrary set, and this is the bulk of the uh, of, the, or, or, of the theorem, uh, 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 and the law is that the velocity is the crystalline curvature, and the four convex set, for simplicity, otherwise you have a sign uh, there in the curvature, you have a coordinate side, then the curvature is uh, as before, as in the, in the case of, of rectangles. Otherwise, it's zero. So for example, in, in a circle, you have uh, four points at infinite curvature, the rest, rest as, as uh, zero curvature, because you have four points with, uh, with L equals zero, if you want, and then you, you start immediately shrinking, and then you shrink to a point. At some point, you, you become a, a square, and then you shrink to a point. This is a simplified, uh, a simplified version with respect to the uh, mean curvature flow, because to understand the thing, you have just to, uh, to solve a system of all these. So what about uh, the, the case of spin systems? So we know on one side that uh, uh, there is, you have uh, you have a crystalline crystalline flow, me, uh, flat flow, if uh, if uh, epsilon is very small. But the, uh, the critical scaling, then we, we can look at, we can test what happens on rectangles, and then the bulk of the of the paper actually with, together with Maria Stella Gelli and Matteo Novaga was to uh, to pass from rectangles to the to the uh, to, the, to arbitrary set, but that, that is the technicalities swept under the carpet. So uh, here you have, uh, you, let's focus on close to a corner, and uh, close to a corner uh, you, you have uh, shrinking, uh, shrinking of this rectangle, and then uh, uh, one understand that uh, rectangles evolve into rectangles, discrete rectangles evolving discrete rectangles. And you can move on, since you, you, you have to overcome a line of, uh, of uh, you have a minimal length, epsilon, you can move only if, uh, uh, if uh, uh, the decrease of the perimeter is sufficiently large with respect to the dissipation, or if you want, the length of, 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 the, of the side is sufficiently small with respect to, to tau. And the velocity is quantized, and, and actually, uh, you see, uh, if you look at the, if you take as parameter the distance from the previous, from the previous uh, side here, 
In, in this direction, there is a contribution of the dissipation. The dissipation is the L2 distance from the previous, uh, the previous set, which is quadratic. So it's like having a parabola. And uh, the, the energy is finite only, uh, well, it's, uh, it's uh, quantized, so it's finite only in multiples of epsilon. So it's like having a kind of sign. So it's, you're not so far away from the, from the simple example that we, we've, we've, seen, we've seen before. And so the effective flow actually is something in which you have a, a very simple homogenization of the, of the, of the, uh, of the velocity. And uh, uh, it depends actually on the limit of tau over epsilon. And it's given uh, by, uh, well, in this case, uh, by, uh, by the integer part of, uh, of, of the curvature. So of the integer part of the inverse of the length up to constant at ergi 2 and, uh, and, this, uh, and this gamma, which gives the, 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 time, the typical time scale of the, of, of the system. So you have a system of ODEs. So the, the, the motion of each of the, of the sides is governed by uh, one over the length of the other side, actually. So it's a system, indeed. And, uh, and uh, uh, this system has a, 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 a discontinuous right, right hand side. So you have to define the, the solutions, and uh, uh, you, you have to extend to a mono monotone graph the, the right hand side and uh, 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 as a result you don't have uh, you don't have uh, uniqueness but just a generic uniqueness and uh, and you have some uh, phenomenon which is uh, uh, pinning after motion for example in the, if you start from as before from from a large circle then you start uh, contracting because you have zero uh, zero curvature uh, sorry infinite curvature in, in these points, but at some point maybe you, you reach the, uh, the, uh, the value when this is one, and then you cannot go below because otherwise it would be zero. And, and so you, you, you have a, a phenomenon which is not there in, in, in motion by mean curvature where you, every, everywhere, you, every time you, you shrink to a point. So you, can, you could have the idea that it, it's, you can take the, 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 the gamma limit, compute the, uh, the compute the, the flow, the, and, and then somehow, uh, somehow uh, have a discretization. But uh, here is another example with Giovanni Schilla. Uh, uh, when, when you introduce some perturbation, which does not change the gamma limit, but does change the form of the, uh, of the evolution. This is a very simple uh, way to introducing uh, a, a perturbation. You always have nearest neighbor interactions, uh, but uh, you have a coefficient which is a little larger. It doesn't matter to, to, have, to be very large, but uh, some, uh, larger than the one that you have in the, in the, in the, black, uh, in the black connections. So minimal sets want to use the black connections, and, but there are enough, we suppose that there are enough black, black, black connections to, 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 uh, to approximate squares and rectangles and then all the sets. So uh, this is a very simple uh, array of, uh, of defected bonds, these uh, harder bonds, as you want, that you want to avoid to have, uh, in order to have less energy. Okay. And in this case, the limit is the same crystalline perimeter, but, uh, but uh, you, uh, you, uh, you have a local optimization argument, uh, which in this case is just that you, uh, you, you avoid the, uh, the defected bonds. So in principle, you could have a situation like, like this one, where you are closer to the, to the previous, uh, to the previous uh, boundary previous set, so you dissipate less, but you, you introduce more perimeter. And you have, it's surprisingly complicated then to, to rule out this, this case. And in the end, you have, uh, you have a, a constrained uh, minimization, which you have to avoid the, uh, avoid the, the red connections here. So you, 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 have, you have contractions of, of these rectangles, but avoiding these, uh, these zones where you have put the, uh, the defects. And uh, uh, depending on the geometry of these defects, this could be uh, a, 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 a homogenization. You, you prove that there is a homogenization of the velocity, and this homogenized velocity 
can, uh, can be only given through a formula. It's not, even in this simple uh, case, it's not, uh, it's not uh, a, a direct uh, closed formula. Okay. But here, here we don't have, uh, we have not uh, introduced uh, uh, microstructure. So it, 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 the difficulty usually is that uh, minimizers de develop some kind of microstructure. So here, minimizers were always uh, rectangles. Maybe not the, the minimal ones uh, in, uh, without the dissipation, but the ones that minimize uh, some energy plus dissipation. So the, the, you, you have no creation of microstructure, and the, maybe the difficulty in homogenization is exactly the, the microstructure. So we, we had to, to, uh, to find some other examples uh, in which you favor microstructure. So instead of having strong bonds, you introduce weak bonds. And uh, uh, these weak bonds are pictured like here, so are, are placed in a way that you always have to cross weak bonds. And uh, optimal sets now want to use the most weak bonds that, that, you, that you want. In this case, the, the weak bonds are not zero, otherwise it would be trivial, it would be just another uh, of these lattices, but have value epsilon. So you have the, the, the black bonds in which you have value one, so you pay the perimeter. And in these ones, you pay epsilon the perimeter. So you have something inhomogeneous on the boundary of these sets. And uh, uh, the, the, the limit is still the same uh, crystalline perimeter in this case. And uh, uh, so we have to change the value of the bonds here. It's two, actually, because we are mixing uh, in order to have exactly the perimeter you have to, to, count, to account for twice these, these interactions. So to cover the, 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 the lessen, lessened contribution of the, of the green ones. But now if you compute the, uh, the, how the, uh, the microstructure evolves, then you start uh, with the usual rectangular test. You start from the rectangular test. So here we have a larger rectangle to start with because the micro, in the macro section come, come out. So we have to have a larger picture. I hope you see that uh, in which uh, the, to describe uh, uh, what happens. So what happens is that, okay, close to the boundary, close to the boundary of the previous set, uh, then you pay little dissipation. Remember the dissipation takes into account uh, a square distance from the previous boundary. So uh, you pay little dissipation here. So if you're close to the boundary, you can dissipate. And uh, you, you uh, dissipating, so change, dissipating here means just changing the, the, the color of, the, of, the, uh, of your dots here. And, uh, and the, but if you're inside, then there is a zone in which dissipating is large enough, so uh, 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 it's not convenient. It's more convenient to, to, uh, to keep the set there and pay a little, a little perimeter. Here, we are paying four epsilon every time you have a dissipation. Instead of dissipating there, since you, you are far from, from the previous boundary, it costs a lot. If you're far away, then it's not convenient neither to, to, to dissipate nor inter, to introduce perimeter. So what you have is that you have a motion of, uh, of this rectangle into another rectangle plus uh, a kind of fuzzy region, what is called the mushy layer in fluid dynamics. Actually, uh, this is strange that the, the, we, you do this computation completely. Uh, abstract, and then you discover, oh, well, this is the, what, what they are doing with, with some models in, in, uh, in fluid dynamics. Uh, see, of course, in three dimensions, so the, these regions are not dots, but are like snakes going out from, from a region. What happens at the next step? The following step, it happens that uh, uh, these points here are very close to the previous set. So the, the dissipation of these, co these points costs very little because they are distant ones from the complement. So they are, com they are immediately dissipated. They, they evaporate. They, they evaporate, and uh, evaporation is exactly the, the type of, uh, 
of things that you observe in fluid mechanics, in fluid dynamics, actually. So uh, this mushy layer disappears, and then you have another rectangle to start with. You can ignore this mushy layer, and then you start again. So you have a motion now of the internal set. And what you obtain is that you can compute the limit velocity. The limit velocity is a little uh, more complicated to compute. But the strange thing is that, uh, so it, it, it has two regimes depending if the dissipation is convenient, if, if this mesh layer appears or not. And uh, 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 it has two possibilities. If you introduce the mesh layer, you, you pay, uh, you, you pay uh, this amount. If you don't, you pay this, and you have a little correction to this, uh, uh, to this gamma, gamma k because of the value 2 plus epsilon that you're, you're introducing there. But in the limit, if you let uh, gamma go to infinity, this part is exactly what you obtain uh, in, in the gamma limit. So is the, is the curvature. But not this part. So in the limit, if you, if you let uh, tau over epsilon go to, to infinity, you are violating your, your theorem, well, your uh, compatibility result. Why, why is that? It's not a theorem. It's, okay. it's a compatibility result. It assumed that you had, uh, you had equicoerciveness. Now, you don't have equicoerciveness here. So this, uh, uh, you don't have boundedness of the perimeter. You have a whole region where the, where you, the, 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 uh, the perimeter becomes unbounded here, there. And uh, in this case, uh, you should take into account what happens here. You should take into account that there is a boundary layer, and if you take into account of that, you have to compute the gamma limit in a different topology, in a different way, you can do that. But in this new topology, the dissipation is not a continuous perturbation, so you can't apply, apply this. So this is a general issue, actually, the interaction between energy and dissipation, both in this context and in the case of, of, uh, uh, of variational evolution in the, in the, in the sense of milk. So uh, still, you, this is an, an additional uh, term which looks like a forcing term. So you're introducing a forcing term that's not really, it's a new, new, ex, a new example, but uh, maybe you, you, one should look at the surface mic microstructure. So what happens, uh, not, uh, not introducing something in the bulk, but introducing something on the surface. So, and, uh, uh, so we, we, we have systems where you have a lot of surface interaction. These are systems with anti-ferromagnetic interactions in which locally uh, the, interaction, the, 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 the points, the, the spins, would like to be uh, oriented differently, so zero and one. So if uh, you have only nearest neighbor interactions, then it's not interesting. But you have, if you have uh, longer range interactions, for example, in this case, we are looking at nearest neighbors and second neighbors, next to nearest neighbors. This is N and N is next to nearest neighbors. And the next to nearest neighbors are strong enough. Then the ground states are, are striped patterns, striped patterns uh, of horizontal or vertical uh, spins, same way zeros and ones. And uh, the limit can be, can be uh, described as uh, a partition into, sets of, into four sets of finite perimeter. And uh, there is a whole theory developed by Ambrosio and myself. And, and also, uh, this theory was suggested by, by the Georgi, so somehow as an intermediate step, which was not clear at the time why there was needed, to, there was needed an intermediate step. And indeed, uh, instead, uh, this, uh, this theory is very interesting by itself and, and also simplifies a lot some, some questions. And uh, somehow uh, we discovered later on how, how useful it is to have a separate theory of, uh, of partitions to sets of finite perimeter. So since we have four sets, in general, we will have an evolution of networks, not of sets in the limit. And, uh, uh, but uh, we can limit ourselves uh, to have only two variants, two of these sets. What, what does it mean in this, in this limit procedure? That in the limit we have only striped, uh, uh, two types of striped uh, uh, configurations. Here we have, uh, in the inner part here, you have uh, vertical uh, 
vertical uh, arrays of uh, zeros and ones, and also in the outside, but with different parity. So the parameter here is not only the orientation, but also the parity, because there is a mismatch here that generates, uh, a, that generates a boundary layer. Well, two different types of boundary layers, actually, in the vertical and horizontal direction. And indeed, in this case, you have, uh, so if you limit in the, in the end of having uh, only this kind of, of situation, you have just a, a usual crystalline, uh, crystalline uh, uh, perimeter, but this perimeter has a kind of irregular hexagons as, as wool shapes, which are the limits of sets like this. Okay. But you can evolve them, and in the limit you obtain uh, motion by crystalline in curvature. Uh, sorry, you can evolve this, this F. You can compute the minimizing movement, and in the end, you obtain, uh, well, actually, Al Unger and Taylor obtained a motion by crystalline mean curvature, which, which means that these uh, sets shrink uh, according to their curvature, which is a multiple of the inverse of the length. And uh, so what happens if we start from a discrete level? Well, the, 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 the bulk part of, 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 of the result of the, of the difficulties here is to prove that if we start from a Wolf-like set, so if, they, if the, the normals are oriented in the Wolf direction, you keep having normals in a discrete uh, sense oriented in, in, in these directions. Because, uh, why? Because it could be that the other variants, the horizontal stripes, could, uh, could interfere and could generate other other uh, configurations. But you can prove this. Uh, well, I have to say this is a paper in, together with uh, uh, Cicalese and Yip, who just appeared on the Journal of Statistical Physics. And uh, uh, we, we proved that for the vertical side, there is no much difference. But you can examine what happens on, the, on this bisectric side, say the, the sides uh, oriented 45 degrees. And uh, uh, so let's take a look uh, close to a corner, as before. And uh, in this case, you can have uh, the, introduction, the, the introduction of surface defects, meaning that if you start from, from a, 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 side, a, a corner like this, you can have evolution of the corners. And the evolution here is pictured by this, uh, this line here, that, meaning that you have, you have a motion by, but some, into something which has the same shape. or you can move, but uh, introducing a small defect. So every, everywhere you are minimizing, except at one point in which you are not minimizing the energy, but the energy plus the dissipation. So it's convenient to, uh, to minimize, to introduce one small defect here if, uh, uh, if, uh, if in this way you're reducing the dissipation. So you're dissipating a, li a little less. So it may be that uh, you can always have a, a situation like this. You evolve continuously in, into sets of the same form, or you introduce flickering, uh, toggling, maybe the one that, uh, that uh, John Kahn was looking in his experiments in, in these uh, in, in corners there. You, you go from, from uh, a non-defective to a defective, a non-defective to a defective, and so on, and you homogenize also this. So, the outcome is that you exit from the usual motion by, uh, by curvature. So already the, uh, the motion by crystalline curvature is non-local, but now you're non-local motion by, by crystalline curvature, meaning that the motion depends not only on the length of one side, but also on the neighboring side. So you have uh, this, final, this final picture in which you, this is a, 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 a typical set that you want to describe, of which you want to describe motion. And uh, you, disc, you, you have uh, the upper and lower side that move by the, the, the usual discretization of the crystalline curvature. And here you have something very wild, actually. So the motion at one side is uh, governed by the, the, the length of these two sides, which is uh, uh, the inverse of which is the curvature. And this is the picture that you can compute explicitly. The picture of, uh, uh, of this function here in two dimension. This, is, uh, this takes only integer values. is zero on this region here. 
It's one on this region here, then it's two on this region here, three, and so on. And these are the regions, these small places here are the regions where you toggle. You have flickering, if you want, of, of, from one type of corner to the other. So uh, this, uh, this is somehow the, 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 the outcome of starting from, from, from a very, very simple type of interactions, computing the gamma limit and having and, 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 uh, and seeing that uh, the, you, you, are, you are diverging from, from the motion of the gamma limit more and more significantly. I don't know if we can, if, uh, if this is the, the, the larger class that you can obtain, but still, even in this very simple example in which you have system of ODEs, it's, it's, it's complicated enough uh, to, uh, to, to understand. So when we have discovered a lot of effects, but uh, when, when we, when actually Aaron Yip showed me this flickering, uh, this uh, flickering uh, phenomenon, my mind went to, to this observation of, uh, of the Georgie, which was dormant in my mind. And, uh, and I asked myself, well, is this what the Georgie had in mind? And probably not. Probably he had something completely different. But, uh, but it's nice to see that, uh, okay, still his memory lingers on and we are following his teachings after all, all this time. So thank you for your attention.